Welcome to part five. How did we manage to milk this winch fitting into five parts? I'll never know, but we did. Um, not intentionally. Right, this video, I thought we'd been through all the pain with the wiring, but this video is pretty much the most painful video, isn't it, Tyler? Yeah. Lots of cutting, lots of, oh, and, and um, so only watch the rest of this video if you really want to see the step-by-step -step instructions, I think all our banter had run out by the time we got halfway through this video. We were getting quite tired. But here it is, it's done, the winch is on. We haven't damaged any wiring looms, it's all working, we've got the number plate on, we've got it all on, we've got the soft cover. So watch the rest of this video if you wanna see step-by-step-ish how we've done it. But it's a pretty arduous, lots of details and cuttings. As ever, we will put down in the description here the link to the genuine Land Rover instructions, which you should always reference side by side. The only point to note is a couple of things, is we did manage to refit the upper automatic air flaps, and I still have to work out if there's a way to open those. I think there is. Uh, Mr. Skywalker has told me there's something in the owner's manual. He wouldn't tell me what, so I've got to pay to get on the owner's man, the workshop manual to have a look, and I will do that next time I get on there. Um, but there we go, it's all on, it's all working. We're ready to go out and do some videos. Enjoy watching the rest of the video, but be warned, it does get fairly tedious, lots of steps of cutting. There is a bit of summary at the end as well. So enjoy that, part five of the winch fit. We are here for chapter five. We are comparing this to Revelation, the last book of the Bible, for those of you who had a religious upbringing. So, what are we doing today? We have got the winch on when we've got a remote control and we've got all that and it's all really good. Now, we are just doing the finishing off bits. So, someone commented, they said, that gold plated connector, don't be leaving that there, heat shrink it. So, Tyler has lovingly heat shrinked it. It's all very black in there, but he's heat shrinked it there. It did look a bit, incongruous didn't it Tyler they can't hear you say yes, yes it did Simon there you go so right so that's that so we got one mystery still left is this part s which looks like I mean those two actually fit and mate into each other I've got no idea what that seems an odd cable to have so I've, I've got that left over right the other thing we're doing is we've just put the two bolts down in here to fit the winch cover on this side we'll do that on the other side we just left it off there so we could show you how to do that. Right, so, you, so they've got captive nuts in there. You can, I'll turn the ignition off in a second. Right, so there's two bolts to go in there. Um, so we'll turn the ignition off. We'll get those grommets in now, because now this is fixed in place. There should be no need for us to go, to go in there, should there, Tyler? No. Right, next thing we've got to put on is this lower lip seal. Um, basically it's got two bolts that go in these corners here and then it's got a nut and a bolt that go on here we'll have a look at it in a minute but I've highlighted these little slots because we've got to get these slots in so let's have a look I've got George helping me now so we've got we've got this so the H1 bolts for the two outer ones and then it's a H1 bolt with an R1 nut for the middle one so let's have a go right we've jacked the suspension up so it's quite cool having the suspension not only for off-road, but when you're working on the car, if you're doing something lower down, jack it up. If you're doing something like when we were in the fuse box, lower it down. Really handy, right, okay. So, you wanna dive under here, George, where can you? Right, so. So under, so we probably need to come around the front a little more, George, because we're trying to get to this bolt here. You slide around the front a bit and you better see it. So that's the hole we're trying to get. So I'm, I'm going up through, if you zoom back a bit, we just, well, I'm gonna go through there. All right, let's have a look, and that's a 10 mil, I think. See if I can get that one in first. So they've done a good job, actually. They, they've worked out where it's hard to get a, a nut to the other side, and they've given you a captive, they've welded a nut on the other side, which is, I'm loving them for that. All right, there we go. <laughs> And this one on the other side goes up through this little flange on here. There we go. Actually, it makes it easy with those holes, Orange. You can see. 
Whoa. Whoa, easy now. All right, it says to tighten them to four Newton meters. Uh, but again, I'll put the link below to the instructions. Now, I'm not sure which way. I'm just going to go and double check the instructions. I'm just going to have a look, George, whether whether the bolt goes up or down. Because if you don't do it right, you might get scuppered later. Yeah, so this is showing the bolt going down and the nut underneath. So there we go. You can see the picture there. Nut underneath. Right, I'll tighten these. Right, let's get this one tight. All right, so I've tightened the other three. That's the last one there. There you go. Right, now the next nut and bolt have got to go on. The, and it's actually this, this mesh grill. Could you see that moving there? And it's bolting that plastic mesh. And the bolts face in towards the middle. And you put a nut on the back. You come around the front a bit, George. You can see me. So it's just going through that metal plate there. So we've got one there. And then... There's another one here, exactly the same. All right, I'll tighten those up and then we'll get on to the next bit. Right, next we need to take this little rubber seal, this profile here, and basically it looks like they're trying to make an air dam so that as much as the air gets forced through as possible. Obviously, there is some airflow loss with the addition of this winch. Um, so they're obviously trying to scoop in every last bit. So. Right, you don't put any on here. We've highlighted orange where we've got to put this rubber seal. None across the winch here and then down here, around here. And we've got to do the same around this front edge of the lower duct as well. Now, it does also say we should put some little bits along the bottom of here, but I'm going to cut a corner. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. Um, I think it's already told us to bolt this in, but we could do. We might, we might have a look. But right, let's have a look how easy this is to do first. Now, I don't know if it focuses down all right let's have a quick look at the instructions right so it always seems to show the trim sort of facing away just to create even more of a, a duct right let's have a look how hard that is to, to squeeze on right so there we go we have the beautiful lip seal it's a bit of a pain isn't it george yeah yeah we're not too happy with that um but yeah we, in the end we had to use a little a little hammer a little plastic hammer just to hammer that on um it took a bit of getting over the little barbs of the trim but there we go we're all um, it actually looks quite neat um, on. Right, next thing we've got to do. Right, so this is the slam panel. This is the bit that goes in across here where our bonnet catches are. Um, now, it will, I'll put the drawing up on the screen now. But basically, we have to cut it out. Now, George has interpreted that. So you reckon that's midway along there, do you, George? Yeah. Along the middle. And you reckon you follow these zigzags, do you? Oh, just on the inside of them, yeah. So it's up this inside of this mountain. And then just so, across. And then just across. <laughs> and, oh, now that's quite interesting, George, because on the back, look, it's got quite a... So we've got to cut the whole of that all the way through that thickness. That's quite a thickness. Right, let's have a look. Right, so I was a bit confused as to how far back we've got to go. The instructions don't tell you. So I thought, let's have a look why they're asking us to cut it out. So obviously it's got to clear this this bit of the winch here. So I think we are going to have to go all the way back with this bit just to clear the bulge of this winch. So we're going to have to cut not only the front there, we're going to have to somehow find a tool for cutting all the way to the back. Right, so this is a little mini saw. I think it won't do too bad. Um, it's got a clever little mechanism on here. So when you cut, it releases the little, when you press that in and it's going to go down. So we've got a choice of, it came with three discs, which is pretty cool. Um, so I think I'm going to, that one looks like it's more for um, ceramic cutting. This one is a finer tooth. This one's got 44 teeth. That one's got 24. I'm going to go for this one. I think that'll rip through that pretty good. So I'm going to, it comes with an Allen key. I'm going to whack this in here and then let's do a little product test on it. Right, here we go. So it looks like we can, oh, yeah, so let's have a, I like to cut through the cable. Right. I think I'm going to have to put a different grinder at the edges there, but let me see how it does this front bit. Well, it seems to be doing the job. Right, I will continue to chomp through. It looks like there's a bit of metal or something in there. It's making a right chomp of it. Right, that was probably a bad idea. Although this is all plastic, it looks like there's a metal plate embedded in it. I thought it was sparking and struggling a little bit. 
Um, so I've just got the grinder out and you can see there's clearly metal. You'll watch now when I cut with the grinder, you'll see that there are some sparks. So yeah, wear eye protection, um, but yeah, your grind is your job for getting that. We'll chomp through all of this. So it looks plastic, but there's a secret bit of hidden metal, be warned. So it's not too bad. I've just flipped it over and just run the grinder through those ribs there. Um, and that actually, look, there you go. That's not gonna come out too bad. But yeah, it's got a tricky little metal. You can see it there, actually. Look, you can see the, it's plastic encased around a little bit of metal there. So we'll just file that and get that a bit neater. Um, now it doesn't tell us to put that on yet, but we'll get that ready to go on later and we'll get on with the next bit now. Right, in our next bit of Wolverine cutting, we've got to cut through this bit here. Now notice this bit is a little sort of cross, it's a locating pin, you can see there. But this line goes straight through and you end up cutting off that bottom so it will go to like a, a T-shape from across it. So we've got to cut that, cut that bottom lug off and then keep going and then doosh, so I'm going to cut that out. I'm going to try using the grinder, which again, it's not ideal because it's plastic and it might clog the blade. Um, but I can't get my new super tool in because of this lug if it was flat. Um, so I'm going to try that and we'll see how it goes. All right, then the second bit, as you look at it this way up with the, this round hole at the bottom, it's not the first lug, number one. It's this second sort of gusset plate here. You've got to rotate it around. And we've got to cut out again i'll put the pictures up of the instructions as we go through this we've got to just cut that out now that's quite tricky to cut so i'm going to try going in with the grinder and then i'm going to just try and fold it out i think if i cut the two sides i might be able to snap it out we'll have a look all right so i've cut that uh, i don't know how brittle this plastic is because i can't get in into the corners get if i bend it one way And he's giving up plastic fatigue. There we go. That was an easy enough way of getting that. Again, I'll just tidy that up with the file now. Tidy that up and then we'll put that to one side and see what's next. Right, I think it's a good time now to get the horns in. So I've left the fittings when I took them out in place here. The devil is in, so there's a little hook. You've got to like hook it behind that. Yeah, and then get it over that plastic pin there and then get the bolt in there we go all right we'll get that done up get the other one and then we'll be on to the brake ducts um so these are the air cooling ducts and basically if i put this in where it's going to go I, I like to explain why we're doing stuff as well as just what we're doing what we've got to do is we've got to get that into this hole here so you see this isn't going to fit unless we cut this corner out and then we're gonna have to drill. So the instructions, I'll put the picture up now, um, but what you've got to do is cut this little L shape out, but then you've got to drill a new hole. So you, you're, the ribbed section you're leaving, it's the flat edge here, um, and you've got to drill a new hole in the same position, but halfway along here. You wanna do it in the, to give you maximum material either side. So it's a seven millimeter drill. So we're gonna do this highly scientifically. So we've got our bit of wood there. It shouldn't wander too much. So we want to be at the same thing, roughly in, sorry, here in the in between the hole and the ribbed area, because we're going to cut this bit out. Nearly got it wrong. Yeah, again, if you cut on a bit of wood, it should give you a nicer finish. Mm -hmm. Right, I'll file that neat, and we'll do the same on the other one, which is the same, the same as that, but the opposite way round. And now we can position that with the cut out and we've still got the hole. Right, the next thing we need to do is put the front panel on. And if you can remember, the front panel was held on with loads of these bolts that went in here, 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 here. To speed things up in the video, I'm going to slow it down by, well, I'm going to speed it up by buying a new toy, but I'm going to slow the video down by showing you my new toy. So this is a cordless driver thingy. So I haven't even opened this yet, so let's have a look. And we've got the Milwaukee wheel nut gun, and that's really good, isn't it, George? We yeah. like that. Oh, look at this, George. Well, this is like a video of Simon's new toys, right? Right, 
and so we have a charger hopefully with a, a three pin plug we'll get that then i wonder i mean i've got the other milwaukee oh wow look so it's compatible with my it looks like it's got the same one there as my other one i've mounted on the Universal. wall so i don't need this one so there we go we've got a we have a milwaukee charger i don't need and then if I can get it. If I could work out how to get it out, it'd be good, John. I got it. It's a mix of Velcro and elasticness. So there we go. So there's your battery. I guess that comes off the back. There you go. It looks like we've got to squeeze it. Already. There you go. Yeah. So we've got a little bit of squeezage there. And that comes out. And then that should. We've got a light and everything, have we? So yeah, we'll get the sockets on it. And we'll start, okay, so we've got a charge level indicator. The only thing I've got to work out now is, is how we change direction. But there'll be some cunning switch on here somewhere, I'm sure. Right, so we've, we've mastered our new toy and we are now going to use it to mount this, the uh, cut and hacked about front, what do they call it, George? I've forgotten. Front slam panel, I'll call it. Right, so there's 14 bolts like this. So these are these bolts we took out, 13 millimeter with the built-in washer. So let's have a look. This should now, should be straightforward enough, shouldn't it, John? Ah, yeah, well, so the thing that's keeping me off is the radiator. So make sure you, I'm gonna have to wiggle the radiator to get that into its, its mount. That seems to be restricting it a little bit. Right, so what I had to do was, I had to pull the radiator forward quite a lot, but make sure you get those, get them in there. Sorry, there's not a lot of light, but you get the, and make sure you haven't dislodged those rubbers. And then all the bolts all line up. Right, so we've got 14 bolts, 13 millimeter head on them. Right, and George, we have a swap. Right then. Right, so George is all ready. One thing we decided to do is we've put all the 14 bolts in. I think that's a good idea, because if you put one in and tighten it, you haven't got the movement. And also you can, we did have to push the wings a little bit, because there is a little bit of alignment there. Those wings sort of flex in and out. So make sure you get them all in. And then, right, so to change the direction on this Milwaukee socket thing, you've got to, at the moment, if you spin it, George, you can see that it goes, it's going anti-clockwise. Okay, let me do, let me zoom, I'm gonna get a bit of zoom in. Right, and then if you, what you've got to do is you've got to turn the, the little lever on the end there anti-clockwise to make it go clockwise, and then it'll spin. Right, have a go, George, just see what these, now I don't know how we adjust the torque setting yet, so just see what happens, how does it do it? Go on then. Right, so next thing putting back together is the brake ducts. So these go in with these slightly manky looking now fir tree fixings. So we've got our new hole and the original one there. So let me see how we can do this, George, without getting in each other's way too much. So yeah, the, threads in through the pipe work there you got the ducting for the pipe work and then it goes in and then you've got one hole here on your the mount get that one in that's it and the second one should go on our slightly modified bit up here if we've done that right yeah, there we go. So I'll get the other brake duct mount and that's the brake ducts on, that's no trouble. Right, we are on the bumper now, we're on the home straight. Thank goodness. Right, we've got to remove the stick nu number plate. Oh, we've been somewhere dirty, George. Right, and then I'm gonna remove the fittings. So that is the front number plate, that is the front number plate fittings. We will clean that up. Right, we have to disconnect the parking sensors now, just the two middle ones. Um, so let's, uh, this one's in the better light, isn't it, George? So I think you've got like two little ears you've got to like separate out and then you should be able to pull the... There you go, yeah. So you've got these two little ears that stick out and so you basically just got to separate those little wings there and that. So we've got to disconnect those. What else did it say, George? Just disconnect them for yeah, now. Yeah, and remove them. And remove them off of here, yeah? Yeah. It looks like we've got to do something with that little pin there. Right, well, these little red things seem a bit tricky. Uh, I tried to pull it out and it didn't work out too well. But I think it's probably easier just to, to get a little screwdriver in under here and 
just lift it out like that because you're just trying to get over that little ramp i don't think that's the official way of doing it but it seems to work so there we go so we've got the two parking sensors off i'll put a different sticker on that one it wasn't on very central right so what we have to do now is take the camera out here i'll show you how to do that but just to give you an overview of what we then need to do we then need to strip the whole bumper into the sections i did this when i was um, painting it with the raptor paint so we basically need to take the fog lamp surrounds off we need to take the front bit off um, so we're going to need to undo all these fixings but let's crack on with the camera right so there are three fixings on the camera one at the bottom they're loose you can see it moving around and there's two hidden up under here so let's get those out and get the camera off right now the camera is a bit tricky to disconnect basically you've got a little tab on the top here and you've got to press that in but at the same time you've got to sort of lever the camera against the camera you've got to press that in with your thumb and sort of try and get the there you go um, but i think these are going to get quite blocked up with mud so they're going to get quite tricky it's quite a fine connector there um, i have to put a wd-40 on it and stuff so so there's your camera they're quite expensive so be careful with that that's the camera housing apparently we won't need that anymore so now basically we've got to strip the whole bumper down and take all the bits off of it so we've got to take the screws out of here <laughs> Right, you now need to remove these sort of front fog lamp surrounds and basically I'll, I'll show you on the other side but you need to ram a thing in here and these are just on these sort of clips and basically just to fight this this off it okay so that's on these clips like that so that takes those off so let me get those screws out because that holds the edge of this on can you see that in there george yeah right so when you've taken these two out here let me see if i can and the, the same on the other side. I'll leave that there for a minute. There's two hidden at the bottom here. So that's three down each side, three on this side and three on this side. Right, and then I think we're going to have to undo these two on the side here. Sorry, I haven't coloured all these in, but you can see where they are. There's one there and there should be one the same place the other side. Right, so once you've got those screws out, if you give it a start in one corner, you can sort of start to peel this off. Now I'm going to make this look super easy, but we have just been shouting and swearing at this, haven't we, George? Yeah. There you go. It's sort of, oh, as you were about to see. But you have just got to be brutal. there right so this has got this out we will go and give this a clean and apparently this should reveal some cutting lines all will be revealed right so we have cut dismantled not cut we've done lots of cutting we've got more cutting to do don't worry um so we've stripped it down we've taken the fog we've got that bit there we've got a bit more stripping to do on that yet um and now we've got this bit off and what we've got to do on this bit now this bit we think is sort of going to go over here ish and what we've got to do is cut round here to get round these bits i think i'm guessing but actually if you look at the instructions and i'll put the thing on the screen now you'll see that we have to actually cut the whole middle bit out and we're just going to be left with the two end bits now what they say on the instructions is they say there's actually and you have to look you have to have the eyes of a hawk and you can see that there is a very fine line marked in here but there's a whole myriad of lines goodness knows what they're all for but we have to there's a little diagram in the instructions and we have to cut the orange line out so don't follow these other ones that i've sort of penciled in white we've got to do that but before we do that we have got to remove this lower grill which i think goes in the bin but again we have never fitted a winch before so you you and us we're working out together never ever and you notice we've changed from tyler to george this this video is taking a while we thought this would be the easy bit we thought we were on the home straight didn't we tyler i had george in at the weekend helping me we're back in on monday now 
just finished in the warehouse. All right. Just a lot of work. A lot of cutting, sponsored by Wolf Wilkinson Sword, or to sponsor this one. Not some plasticky clip. Oh, he's a. Oh, just a mean old. <laughs> Once, these clips are weird, aren't they? Once, once you've told them who's boss, they give up fairly easily, but they, they do fight. So I think we're going to lose that bit. Right, now the ridiculous thing is now, we're going to end up with just these two little bits. Now I couldn't quite finish marking the line here, Tyler. So we have to have a look. Oh, look, there's the dirt. Look at that. The dirt is highlighting the line for me. So I'll just get my super orange pen and we'll mark that on both sides. But you can see there's just a, a faint line. The dirt is actually doing us a favor there. So we've got to come along here, along here. And it says use a drill to drill out the corners. So you get nice curvy lines. But I don't know how we're gonna do that. That's a, we'll have a look. Right, so I am, rather than working with this great big long bit, I am gonna be a brute and I'm just gonna cut this bit here, cut this bit here. So that's gonna be, easier to work with right we'll do a little bit of this it's not going to be pretty so i'm not going to film too much of it there we go. right after that you should be left with that's all you get left with i hope we've done this right tyler or we're going to end up with Two odd bits of, yeah. So there's there's the rest of it, if we need to put it back together again. Um, that's what's, anyway, so so that's that, right? So we're, I'm interested to see how all this goes back together now. Um, in the end, Tyler did the second bit and you did it with the Dremel and it come up right, didn't it, Tyler? Yeah, let's move out. Let's move out, so there we go. So we're, we're a fan of the Dremel. Right, I will put those carefully there. Right, now, as if that wasn't enough cutting. Right then, so now we've got, and again, the diagram's online but you've basically got to cut up to the edge of there, they mark it, don't they? Then an yeah. extra five millimeters past this crease, and you've got to cut. Now, I guess this is for the frame. So again, we're going to have a go at, I'm going to do, I'm, going to, I'm still a fan of the grinder, so I'm going to grind up there, Tyler. And then that one there, I think we're going to, let's have a go at Dremel in that one. Let's see if the Dremel's, some materials is good, and sometimes this, let me see what my pro Dremel skills are like. <laughs> right, so there's a little slot that's marked out, and again, Tyler's just, Put some masking tape there. Right, you get the idea. We're gonna dremel around there and then we'll um we'll tidy that up with a file, but you don't need to. I'm not doing too bad actually. So we'll we'll stop there while I'm doing alright, Tyler. Right, and then I'll get the grinder and cut those and we'll dremel around the top and you'll come back and join us. This will all be beautifully done. So, right, there we go. We've got that cut. Now, as if that's not enough cutting, this is getting ridiculous. We have to cut a 40 millimeter hole here, right? And that's 185 millimeters from this edge. Again, all the instructions are online. It doesn't tell you how far up and down it goes, but it does sort of show, it actually shows it coming off the bottom, but I don't want to do that because if my drill breaks through there it's going to go like that so i'm just going to try and keep it there now we've had a look now this is the this is all to do with putting this cover on and this cover is going to sit on here like so and these two slots are going to line up with these two fixing points here and here and this apparently hole here is for a, a feed to come through for the front camera so it's only to feed a wire through i think so i don't think we're going to see it anyway so i am going to go with that so what have we gone for in our whole drilling emporium, Tyler? We've gone for the the whole saw. All right, and here we go. The old. There we go. Right now, while you're doing all of this, word of caution: be careful. You do have your radar. It has a thousand pound that radar, be so just of beware of looms. They yeah. lurk, don't they? Yes. Right. So. There we go, so we can now remove all the tape and get that, and then we've got more cutting to do next. We've got to, right, here you go, let's, let's, I've worked this bit out, right? So then, what we got, the remnants of our bumper, we've now got to separate this, and we've got to cut this middle grill bit out. 
and we've got to cut some 25 millimeter hole here so i started to dismantle this tire this is right and here we go so you, there is a it, it sort of comes apart here apparently well, i've still got the oh there you go it's coming right i've still got the loom on the back so i've got a dis let me disconnect the loom and pop in these little loom connections out right i'll get all these connections out and then we'll dismantle this right so we've taken the loom connections off so this then should if i can separate this side get there you go whoa that's not too bad again the first one's right so apparently we've got a cut and it goes off this little edge here you see this little square mouth it goes doof there and then shoop, shoop, shoop. we're not going to be we're going to be left with like a super long strip aren't we with no height to it I, we, it's loom, it? let me try the vibratory cut we haven't had we're trying every tool in the toolbox are they aren't we tyler yeah. right i'll keep cutting and i'll but basically i've just got to cut along this top edge now and then your bumper is reduced to this strip is it going to do anything tyler i've got no idea right then what we've got to do is as you're looking at it from here there's the middle there's the first little rectangular mouth there's the next little rectangular mouth and we need to drill a hole just here again the diagrams are online this is my interpretation of them i hope it's correct we're going for what we're going for this time tyler we're going for the blade drill should be used on wood well look, we've got wood there they keep saying that's only to be used on wood that is <laughs> It's all right, isn't it? Does the job. Does the job. Right, we will file away and get that. That and the higher, is that all the cutting done? Um, I don't, I don't, I've, said, I've said that's all the cutting done about three times now. Right, let's tidy this up, Tyler. You guessed it, more cutting. So this is the grill. I thought we were throwing this away, but apparently we're gonna zoop, cut that off there, just above the little circles there. This bit, I can't even remember where it goes on the bumper now. I've lost track of whether it's top or bottom. But apparently this little metal strip that came in the kit, we are going to somehow attach to the top of there. Um, apparently it's going to be useful. All will be revealed. because I can, Right, I'm going to cut through that and then we'll, we'll rejoin you and work out how we're going to join that strip on. You guessed it, more cutting. Yep, <laughs> I thought we were done. This is getting a bit of a, yeah. Anyway, right. So basically this front bumper here goes over here and it's got a cut round this so they give you some instructions we've we've had to sort of put the laptop next to where we're working um, and tyler's marked it out here so we're gonna have to do up there around there and then it wrecked this little picture here is a little bonus bit you've got on this side cut out the little corner and we've got a rat along here down here and down there i think after a extensive trial of how to cut these i think we're we're down to the good old dremel aren't we tyler this is our toilet toil tool of choice it's our toilet i'm losing my mind with all this cutting right you can watch me start this but you've watched enough cutting so i'll just get going on oh, my phone's ringing anyway right we'll get on and cut this and then we'll join you in a minute right so we're all beautifully cut now obviously they've worked out as we've realized that this bumper is kind of weak across this middle bit here and i think it is where this bit comes in so this is that metal strip we had and that's the bit we cut off the other bumper. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to screw that on there. And then I think that's going to go in from the front and reinforce this bit across the middle here. So let's get that bumper out of the way. Now, they did give us these screws, but these were the ones where we only had four. And we should have had five. They were missing. And they got a little hex head thing. But I've got a... As I've got to get a different screw anyway, I've found these stainless steel screws here. And I think, so you, So obviously we've got that side, but it goes on the, the sort of back side of it there. And then the other thing it says is we've got this plastic, this rubbery trim, which I think is supposed to go over this, this edge that we cut here. So I think that is supposed to, that's going to take some bashing on that, Tyler. Right, and we'll get that over there. And then I think we put that all up onto the bumper. So we'll have a go at that. So 
Right, okay, this bit turns out to be more complicated. So ignore what I've just said. Um, basically, when you put this rubber strip strip on, which is a challenge in itself, that was tight to get on. Tyler and I had to hold and hammer that. You've then got to put this on the inside. Now, it when you've got that trim on, it sits further back. So the holes that we originally did aren't any good anymore. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna, we're gonna put some new holes in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a screw in here, just like I did just then, but you'll notice it'll be in a slightly different hole. I've just done this. I think I've half worked this out. Now let me just put that one in if I can. There we go. Right. And then what I'm gonna do, because that will hold it now while I drill the other four holes. I'm gonna go with the drilling. And that should, then it's gonna be a game of trying to line it all up on the car. And then I think what we've got to do is come down here, isn't it, Tyler? Yeah. And we've somehow got to clip these clips in with that metal plate sandwiched in there and try and line it all up, which is gonna be a game of something or other. Because right, there's nothing holding that metal plate at the minute. There we go. Right, now, now we've got to count on our lucky stars and we've now got a screw. It actually looks all right. If you zoom in there, Tyler, I reckon we've almost got the Okay, I mean the clips should hold it in, I guess. So let's have a look, then we... It's definitely stronger. Right, and that has screwed in. So we'll screw all those four in, make sure they're pressed fully. And that should have reinforced the front bumper then. Right, so then we've got this. We're starting to reassemble. We, the, the cutting is over, isn't it? Yeah. So this should clip back into here. We should better clip that back in and then it's got a series of these little screws that we got a fire back in these ones we took out before and then once we've got all this clip back up together <laughs> and then we'll put the fog fog lamps around back in Okay, that's that. And then we can clip the, we can clip all the wiring back in now as well. There, let's get all the wire in the right way. Right, we'll finish that off and then we'll work out the next bit. Next bit of the jigsaw puzzle is these little bits. I've got to go in there. And there's some, there's some clips on that as well. Get that getting. <laughs> Right, and then put those screws in these little holes and then it's just the fog bezels I think then and they should just clip in okay so I'll get those in and then we're going to clip that on right so I'll get that done and get the other side done and we should be the front bumper assembled then got that we've got to put the air flaps back on at the top so yeah, in the first video, I thought I had to get rid of the air flaps, but the top, it's only the bottom ones. The top ones are going to go back on. Right, we made a slight, I think it'd be better to put the air duct, the front air duct and this on before the front bumper, but it's not such a big deal. We can just squeeze it in here, look. We can just squeeze that in. There's enough compliance in the bumper there to, to get that in. Get that bottom peg in. He's fighting me a bit, but he's, he's there basically. And and it, it you can see why we trim the bottom of this to clear the to clear. You can't see very it's all black on black, but that's to clear that bottom section there. Right, we'll get that and we'll get this bolted up. Right, we have a go. Right now.
Right, whoa! Right, so let's have a let's have a look. Right, so make sure we've got all our wires where we need them. So these are our parking, we should have two parking sensor wires. I won't forget them, man, will I? So we have got, we've got that, we've got that, we've got that. So obviously we can see the winch in here, just cocooned in there. We've, right, we've put that on, that's all good. We actually had the wrong bolts earlier. So it looks like they mainly use silver bolts where they're out of the weather. The black bolts we had are underneath. So there's four bolts you've got to get underneath. Tyler's put all the wheel arches back together. So we, we've put one headlights around in. We just got the last headlights around to put back in. Um, watch that one, that's got to go on the, that's the radar, isn't it? Yeah, did that, does that go back on there? I think, look, Tyler. There you go, all set, all right. There we go. Good job we do that orange stuff. All right then. Well, Head everything's orange now. <laughs> everything on the car is now orange. Right then, yeah, watch that lead there. <laughs> I remember that, it's a little bit of a fight there. Mm. Mm. Right then. They're a bit weird, these headlights. You sort of got to get those, that edge in first. Boom. Right. Um, bolt. There's a bolt that goes in the side. If I can remember, there we go. Right, so before you put your metal hoop in, that we'll do in just a minute, you've got to put your grill. Now, as you'll see in this video, we'll do the next steps and the grill won't be fitted because we put the metal hoop in and then we're like, oh, poop. So we've had to come back, but I'm fessing up to it. So follow the order of this video. So get that on, get that on. Right, so the thing you've got to watch is the camera connector goes through the front of here. Right, what else have we got to watch? Toilet, we've got to get the radar sensor, although we've probably got room to plug that in later, haven't we? Yeah. Let's get the radar sensor on there. All right, he's all clicked on, he's all fine. All right, and then we should just be able to line that up. And he's just on clips, isn't he, Tyler? Yeah. yeah. So I think he just... All right, and how many clips have we got left at the bottom on this one? Let's have a look. <laughs> And that does all seem to fit. So, so obviously you can see now where we've got the cutout in the grill, where the, the metal pole is gonna come up. You'll, obviously we've fitted it without that in the video. I could refilm it, but I'm not gonna, you, you can work it out. Um, we've got the parking, uh, the parking camera. We've got the parking sensors out the side. Right, so we'll get on now and fit the hoop. Now, we've got this hoop of hoopiness here. Okay, so this is, this is gonna go in the front. So you've got to watch these plastic bits here and it, make sure your parking sensor cables are around the side. And then you can get that in there. The same at the other side. And that clips in like that. Right, Tyler's laid everything out here that comes, this came in the box with this, right Tyler? I'm correct, yeah. So obviously you've got that main metal frame and you get all these selections of fittings, which Tyler has beautifully laid out. So we've got a camera mounting, we've got to get that fitted on. But for now, we'll focus on the bolts. So, we right, so we're gonna grab these two long bolts and these two nuts here, and we are gonna get, let's fire these in. So these go from the, the outside, fire it in, from the outside, and you've got to wiggle it about a bit. We tried this, we did, look, we did practice a bit off the video, didn't we, Tyler? Wiggling. Bit of wiggling. It seems to a bit of a bit of wiggling, bit of winding. Here he comes around the side here, Tyler. So there you know. He's coming through. He's a bit tight. Let me get one of those on that. Well, I'm not gonna do it super tight, let me just get that on there for now. Because I want to get the other one on, and then there's another bolt that goes up underneath. So if we zoom back to the table. So you've got these, so it's the smaller headed bolts, right Tyler? Yeah. Tyler's got this worked out. And then that one should, hopefully, if we get underneath here, oh, only just, but it's there. It's all a bit black. They need to paint yeah. things orange. Oh, that is tight, that. They got... Right, so we got it in there. Um, but Tyler had to push with all his might on the front of this, like that, to sort of swing the bottom out, pivoting about that bolt. 
So you might need a two man job to get that in there. So we've got that one. Right, we'll get the rest of that done and then we'll come back and we've got some fun. We got more cutting to do. It's not a clever bit of design, but if any, I don't think anyone's still watching, so I'm like, oh, if I was, I'd have given up by now. Stay, we're gonna, we're gonna cut two little squares out the top of there. Doot, doot, and then we're going, but let's get this metal frame on. The metal bra is on. It was a bit of a pig, wasn't it, Tyler? Yeah. Yes. In the end, we had to put a little sort of rounded end. We had to put it on the grinder to give a pointy end to the bolt there. And then we had to fire it in, which is heathen. Um, but it was the only way we we're getting it in. And that bottom one wasn't. Land Rover could have been a bit more generous on the slots there. If you're fitting this and you're at this stage, let us know if yours lines up perfectly or if you had to fight yours on. Right, enough of that. We've got more cutting to do. Right, so this is for those of you that have front mounted camera system. On our Model S, we have a 360 degree camera system, which is cool. Um, we've got to get this in. Now, Land Rover, show them the instructions, Tyler. Land Rover reckon that all you need to do is just get a little hacksaw. Show that where's the, just get a hacksaw in and just take these two little chomps off. But come and have a look what it looks like in real life, not on the computer. Look, we've got to, I can't even get the light on it. We've got to cut out two little bits there so that these two little hooks here, so the camera can sit fully forward. Well, if they'd have done that when that grill was not, and the grill is sort of melted on, look. It's a bit rubbish the way it's melted on, to be fair. Um, but yeah, so I've had to, so we've got to get the Dremel in here. All right, let's have a go. I'm going to, look at that. It, I'm going to have to just pull that up there. Whoa. Right, apparently, if I've done that right, that should give me enough room. I've lost it. There we go. I got it. I got it. Right, so I've got to get this in from the outside, up in, right, and then that should, it's better this way up, look, so that should then sit forward enough there, and I guess that cover's got to go on, hasn't it? So as long as we've yeah, got it, see. as long as we've got it forward enough for that to sit on there, then that's good enough, right, and then we've got to put a couple of screws through. Now, handily, Land Rover do not give you self-tapping screws. Self-tapping screws here, if I had enough arms, would be great. So I'm going to get Tyler to do this off camera. We're just going to put the self-tapping screw through there. Right, we're ready to assemble. So we can put the parking sensors. It comes ready with the parking sensors. So I'll demonstrate this side. There you go. Read the instructions, Simon. Have a word with yourself. There we go. Right, so that's that. So the next thing we've got to mount, I'm guessing, is the camera. So. So we've got the parking sensors, then we need to get the camera. Now, this is the housing and you put it into the housing. Now it's important that as you look at it, because if you have it, if you wrote, you can rotate this and fit it multiple ways, but your picture's gonna be upside down, which is gonna be well weird. Um, so you've got to get it in this corner according to the instructions and I'll put the, the picture from the instructions. Then you've got to get one of these little screws here. Um, and then apparently we can clip this on and that's going to screw, yeah, so you've got a screw going through this hole and it's got to pick up on this little tower there. And I think this bit at the bottom here is sort of designed to push this camera into location. Yep, so these clips, you orientate them and they go on these, not on these rounder ones, they go on this sort of this flat edged one here. That's all cool. And then you've got these tiny little clips. Zoom in on them if you can, Ty. You have to use your zoom facility. Right, now they've got a, they've got a little springy bit. Oh, I can't even. And the springy bit, right, so where are they going? They're going on these here, and the springy bit goes towards the mouth. Like that. Can you see that, Tyler? Got some yeah. light on that, yeah. yeah. So that's that. Right, is there anything else? We've then, are we then on to the adhesive, Tyler? Yeah. Right, then. right, so let's put that down. So that's all. So obviously, as we plug that in, we've got to remember our cable for our cameras and the two things. Right. Let's have, so as it reckons you pull these bits of tape off now. Right, we'll peel these off. Oh, I'm, I'm doing better than Tyler. <laughs> I would say I'm 100, but that's not me. 
Right, there we go. Yep, yeah, right. So that is obviously, right, we've got his alcohol wipes. These were supposed yeah. to come with the kit and some adhesion promoter, yeah. right? We haven't got any, didn't come. We got mugged off, Tyler. Right. Didn't really, we got it for free. That's a bit harsh. <laughs> you got the opposite of my job. Yes. Right. Then. So that should get rid of all our greasy fingerprints. By the wonders of video editing, you can see the grills now in, but I did fess up to it earlier in the video. So, right. So that's all in now. Um, we got the camera on as well, and it was easier actually to fit the camera last feed the cable through. Now what I did do is the cable sort of crank, so I didn't feed it through the middle because it spans three squares. I put it through the one this side so that the wire comes in and then it cranks and lines up better. But that was actually easier to do that, so I would put the camera on at the end. One thing, it might be worth putting that screw in first because when it was sort of virgin, it was hard to get it in. So do that off the car and then it seemed to go in a lot easier. Right. Now we've got to try and fight this on, which is where we were earlier, isn't it, Tyler? Yeah. Now I can feel this clip under here, and I can see the bracket there, but actually I can, you can feel it with your finger, so you can guide it in. I can guide that in, that's all right. Yeah, so I'll do the, I'm, at the same time, I'm holding this off the sticky tape. So let me just find that other clip. Well, I've got him. Yeah, I can feel you, I've got you, buddy. Mm -mm. Right, that's it, that's that on. Right, and then we've got some, yeah, we can massage that down. Let's get the bottom end, Tyler. Oh. Ah, the These beautifully, ones. right, yeah, and there's a hole back there, look. Yeah, indeed. Not the hole that we put our own, not our own, but the nuts on. So we're going to use those to oh, the last gonna, bit. Yeah, Gar's going to say because this Tyler. Agonizing. This has been this <laughs> has been a mammoth job, hasn't it, Tyler? Yeah. We have had the fun wore off after a few days. I got to be fair. Right. So what have we got here? We've got some quarter turn fixings on here. We've got some little like nobules, spheres, project nice. projections. So I can I think I can see how this goes. So it looks like you. So we are all together. We have put the front top panel on. We have put this on. The last thing to put on is the number plate. So we've got the front. Now, unfortunately, the number plate is virtually the same length as this cover here. So you could, but the trouble with that is um, every time you take it off to do winching, because you need to take this off to get to the winchy thing, um, you're going to be driving around without a number plate or lose your number plate. So I did contemplate mounting it across the middle here, but you've got your camera here. So you're going to have to go somewhere, I don't know where, really. Um, so as a last resort, we are going to have to go here. So I've got my number plates around. I'm going to get that roughly central. You haven't got a lot of room before you start getting close to your parking sensors. Um, and we're going to have, that will then come off with our, let's have a look. I've got some screws in it. I should just screw into that. Mm -hmm. That look about right there we go the winch is finished we will do a tour around it we will do a super quick summary wow what a job right so the jeep boys are all loving this they're going simon mate you're out of order that's 40 minutes on a jeep or an old defender is 40 minutes now it's a super winch it's a clever kit it's on that big subframe with the crash cans and it crumples and they've obviously done it all and met all the crash impact protection now i guess the aftermarket you don't need to do all that impact testing but if the main dealers are selling these as a factory fit option they've obviously had to have it crash tested and pedestrian safety so a lot's gone into it and i think a lot of this here is to give you some plastic safety because otherwise you would have the big metal winch so they've had to put some plastic um, between the winch. Land Rover could have helped themselves. They could have run in the cable. They could have had an unused plug that had had that cranking signal and the other thing, the other ignition life signal, they're ready to take off. If they'd have done that at the factory, it would have been a lot easier. And there's a lot of other bits here. I think they could have 
designed it with the accessories in mind. It's clearly an afterthought. It's a great product. I'm really grateful to Land Rover for giving that to us. Hopefully that video has helped you. It's a little bit painful, um, especially that last bit. But there we go. We now need to get out and have some fun. Um, keep watching. There might be a surprise in store over the next couple of days. Even Tyler doesn't know what that is. He's looking confused. Um, we might be getting some new stuff, which will be cool. There you go. Winch, let us know your thoughts. Let us know your comments down below.